Good morning, everyone. Let's all stand together and worship the Lord this morning. Oh, Lord, we love you so much, Jesus. We love you so much. We thank you for the liberty that you've given us, Lord, that we could just worship you freely, Lord, with no encumbrances. And, Lord, we know that a lot of the things that hold us down is within our own brain, Lord, and we put those things aside and we choose to worship you in joy. that you may not know. So I'm going to teach you the chorus first before we start. And the chorus goes like this. Okay. So it's let freedom, Christ's freedom reign here. Let freedom, his freedom reign here. Reign until you guys sing with me. So it goes, let freedom, Christ's freedom reign here. Let freedom, his freedom reign here, reign. Almost, right? Let freedom, Christ's freedom, reign here. Let freedom, his freedom, reign here, reign. Rain here now. 
Let's, yeah. We dwell among the brave, we live among the free. The soldiers sacrifice and shed their blood for me, yet there's a deed for free. Oh, how I long to be fully alive, fully alive. Smash up the shackles and the ropes that tether down. Explode the prison and the chains that had me bound. You shed your blood for me so I can be set free. Now which is Amen. how the Lord won the freedom for us. Amen. Amen. For those of you who are just coming in, um, go ahead and be seated. But for those of you who are just coming in, there's plenty of seats up here with plenty of cereal. And we'd love for you to come up and fill these seats in, fill these seats up. We want to make sure everybody has access to cereal. Okay. 
We want to give you your sugar rush early this morning. Is everybody doing okay this morning? Everybody have access to cereal now? One of these days I'm bringing my milk. Okay. I need milk with my Fruit Loops. Okay, I don't know about you. Well, happy 4th of July weekend. And, you know, Margie and Mark, you could tell the, the songs were geared toward freedom. The freedom that we have in Christ. As a nation, we're celebrating our freedom. And we've got the hot dogs planned and the corn on, we're, my son-in-law wants corn on the cob, so my wife went out and found corn on the, couldn't you just taste some good corn on the cob right now? Because we're celebrating freedom. We're celebrating our nation's, you know, independence. You know, really, we're all dependent on one another. And in the body of Christ, we don't want to be too independent because we need each other. Kathy, I need you. I will not be independent of you. Dave, I need you. I will not be independent of you. And we will still be free. Rodney, I need you. And we will still be free. Pastor Kimberly, I need you. And we will still be a free people, being dependent on one another, yet while declaring, you know, even when I say that, declaring my independence, I'm sorry. I'm a believer. I'm not independent from Jesus. I understand what it means. But our dependency is upon the Lord. And our freedom is really what he did for us. I pray that you'll be able to meditate a little this weekend as you're celebrating what are our freedoms. What Jesus has done for each one of us. We come once a month and we remember. Scripture reminds us that we are to remember what the Lord has done for us. I was looking in 1 Corinthians where Paul talks about conduct at the Lord's Supper. And he says these words. Now in giving these instructions, I do not praise you since you come together, not for the better, but for the worse. I mean, he was getting on the Corinthian church here because they had some things where they were in error. And Paul was simply bringing some correction. Hey, correction is a good thing. If we correct one another according to God's word, that's not a bad thing. All of us in our lives sometime might need a little bit of correction. Dave and Kathy, believe it or not, in many, many years of serving Jesus, I've probably been off a few times, okay? Just, I don't know. But believe it or not, sometimes we're off as believers. Or we might not see something completely how we should. And I love it when I'm corrected by the Word of God. I don't love it when I'm corrected by some legalistic brother or sister who wants to judge me, okay? I don't know if you've ever had some legalistic brother or sister judge you, but always measure it against the word of God. That's where the true freedom comes. If we will line our lives up to the word, we be fine. We be fine. But Paul's talking to them a little because there were a few things out of order. They had some division. There was some dissension. There were some folks even showing up drunk. Pastor Kimberly, you okay today? Yeah, okay. Okay. There was some, you know, we're free. We're free to laugh in church. We're free to laugh in church and have the best time ever. The church is where the party should be happening. There was some discrimination going on. There were people who were forgetting to proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So Paul was bringing a little bit of correction. Turn to your neighbor and say, correction's a good thing. You know, he, he gives them a little bit of correction and then he speaks the words about the Last Supper, which I will do in just a moment, but then he follows it by inviting people to examine themselves. 
Before we go to this table, let's do a little bit of self-examination. The word says, therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Now, growing up, I remember hearing that scripture and thinking, dear Lord, don't let me eat this in an unworthy manner because I will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. And then I remember years ago, I heard a wonderful teaching from Pastor Jack Hayford that talked about this very thing. And some of you heard this message. And he was talking about not so much that we are coming in an unworthy manner, but unworthy from the standpoint of we do not attribute to what the Lord has done. We don't take the full worthfulness of that, of that, that thing he has done for us that we would not approach this moment in a not attributing worthiness to this in an unworthy manner. Did that make sense what I just said? So it's, it's not our worthiness. Not, none of us are worthy. But we are remembering today who made worthiness possible because of his shed blood and his broken body. So today we come in a manner where we ascribe the full worth of what this is all about. If you don't know what this is all about, this is all about Jesus shedding his blood for you and me and our sin and having a broken body for us so that we can also receive healing. There's healing in what we call the atonement. We believe that. This may be a moment you've come here today and you need healing in your life in some area. Let's believe today that that healing will come as we remember what Jesus is doing for each one of us. This is an open table. Everybody in the room is invited to partake. You do not have to be a part of our denomination. You do not have to uh, go three times down in the water forward or three times back, you know, or whatever that is, okay? This is an open table. This is a table for everyone today. We're acknowledging that our sins are forgiven. The precious blood of Jesus washes us clean. We're acknowledging that his body was broken for us. That's what we're doing in this moment. If this is the first time you've ever had communion, welcome. Let Jesus reign supreme in your heart. He will transform your life. There's a room full of transformed people. How many people here are transformed people today? Now watch this. How many of us are still imperfect people? How many of us still mess up? Celia, get your hand up. How many... You know, I'm sorry, it was the world's longest move and we've just completed it. So we're still just, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. But please hear me. We are all still imperfect people washed by the blood of the lamb. Amen. And then Paul continues. And when he had given thanks... He broke the bread and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Would those who are serving us today, please come and distribute the bread. Hold on to that piece of bread and we will all partake together. Again, this table is open to everyone. Honey, could I get a piece, please? Thank you. You know, a simple little wafer, but it's powerful what it represents. You know, we're the body of Christ. We're all part of the same loaf. And this little wafer was all part of probably the same dough mix. This is us. This represents Jesus' body. Some of you might have been raised in a tradition where this was actually Jesus' body to you. And some of you have studied transubstantiation, consubstantiation. Whatever your substantiation is, Jesus is present. 
Jesus is present. You know, we have so many religious traditions and we have so many different denominations and we have so many different theologies and blah, 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 blah. And Dave and Kathy, let me tell you, when I talk about me being wrong, I believe one day I will stand before the Lord. Thank you, ladies. Such beautiful communion servers today. Thank you, ladies. But Dave and Kathy, I know the time's going to come that I stand before the Lord. Maybe he'll talk to me about my theology. And I think in my mind, I'll stand before him. And when he's judging my theology, he's going to go, right, 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 wrong, wrong, right, right, wrong, right, right. And those are the different tenets of what I believe personally. I'm human. I'm not God. But we have all these different theologies, and here's this. And lots of people believe all sorts of different things, but I think we can all agree that Jesus is Lord, and his body was broken for us. And so as we partake today, the word says, do this in remembrance of me. How can anyone disagree with that? So in unity today, with diversity represented among us, the Bible talks about unity and diversity. Let's partake now and receiving all that the Lord has for us. Do this in remembrance of me. Thank you, Lord. We meditate on your goodness. Thank you, Jesus, for your broken body. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper. And ladies, would you please come up and begin to serve us? He said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often, as often as you eat this bread and, and hold your cup, we'll all partake together. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So, Rodney, when I take this cup and when you take this cup, you and I are proclaiming what Jesus has done for us. When each, Tim, when we take this cup, we're proclaiming not only to ourselves, but to the world what Jesus has done. Joel, we're proclaiming today that all of our sin has been washed clean by the blood of the lamb. Mike and Mike, all of our sins washed by the blood of the lamb and proclaiming until he comes what he's done for us. So today, again, the word tells us this do as often as you drink in remembrance of me. Let's partake together in remembrance of Jesus. Let's partake. Praise you, Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, Yeah. 
You can put your cup on the table in front of you. Your sins have been forgiven, washed whiter than snow. You are a brand new creation. Don't think about those tormenting thoughts that might even want to try to get into you right now. We drew the line with the blood. Everything of this last 24 hours, this last week, this last month, washed away. Washed away. We go into a new week declaring freedom. Amen. Amen. Is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory are being transformed into His likeness with ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. You and I are being transformed to be more and more like Jesus. It's not of our doing. It's entirely his doing. Oh, Lord, we thank you that where the spirit of the Lord is, Amen. there is freedom. We love you, Jesus. Where the spirit of the Lord, Lord is,
Colossians 1 15 through 18. The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For, him in all, for in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. Whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He's the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. In all, all things, he has supremacy. Oh, Lord Jesus, you are not only our God that we worship, you are our friend. You say that. I wouldn't have the audacity to call God my friend. I just, I, I wouldn't have the guts to do that. But he calls us his friends and his children. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we come before you with grateful hearts. We thank you for this land, Lord, that you've given us, that's been dedicated to you, Lord, America. Oh, Lord God, we know that there are forces trying to tear it apart and destroy the principles that it's been founded on. We recognize that. The devil's been trying that forever, Lord, but we stand on this land that is dedicated to you. America is yours, and we are yours. Oh, beautiful, beautiful for spacious skies, for In liberation 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Father, that we live in America. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise you, Lord. blessing of being able to worship God in a church property publicly today. There are millions and millions of people that believe in a Jesus like we do, and they hide in their homes and they're underground, and how blessed we are to be able to be public about Jesus in the United States today. What a glorious Sunday. Happy 3rd of July and the celebration of the 4th of July weekend. So we changed things up again a little bit this weekend, and I'm so grateful for the team and Pastor Jeff and Margie and Mark. Um, in the face of brotherhood, we do have a brother that is here that's going to bring you a message today. And I would like to welcome my brother, Rodney Johnson. It was 2003, October, on a Wednesday night, and I was driving to church. I was going to the church on the way, and we were having a special guest speaker that night. His name was Dick Mills. A lot of you know that name. Dick is a man that has memorized, had, he's now in heaven, but he had at the time memorized 7,000 scriptures in a myriad of different uh, translations. And one of the ways that he would minister is that he would preach the word and then he would pick people out of the audience and say, good news, and he would start giving them a, a word. And it was scripture. And so being at the church on the way, there's no way on a Wednesday night that he could give 500 plus prophetic words <laughs> to people. But I'm driving to church that night and I remember exactly where I was when the Lord spoke to me driving down the 405, passing the brewery. <laughs> and the Lord says, I have a word for you tonight. So I was expectant, but I didn't necessarily think that Dick was going to call me out. And here's why. When we would have Dick, he would come usually about once a year. And when he would come, uh, our pastor, Scott Bauer, would say, if you resonate with a scripture that Dick is giving to someone else, write it down, and you can claim that as yours. So that's what I did. Dick had finished preaching, and he started calling people out. And he would say something, and I remember one thing had to do with houses. I'm a real estate broker, and so that resonated with me, so I wrote it down. And then he wrote down some other things as well. Too. I wrote down some other things as well, and he never called me out. I went up to the organ to finish the service, and I laid that scripture on top of the organ. Pastor Scott Bauer came over, and he was talking to me about what song we were going to do at the very end. And as he turned to go back up on the stage, he looked at the sheet of paper, and all of a sudden he spun back around. He said, Rodney, the Lord just spoke to me. And he said, you can have everything that's on that page. Pastor Scott walked up on the stage and he had an aneurysm, and it, uh, it burst in his brain. And two days later, he was dead. And uh, I was so profoundly affected by that. At his funeral, a week or so later, I saw Dick Mills there. And I went up to him, and I told him what had happened and how this, the very last words that Scott spoke as far as ministry were to me. And I felt so touched and humbled by that. But the other thing was... When I shared that with Dick Mills, he said, Rodney, when we finished that night, my son-in-law says, I felt like you had a word for the organist. So there you have it. But that was a prophetic word. Let's see what scripture says about prophetic words. I'm going to put on my glasses here. 1 Corinthians 14.3 in the Passion Translation says, but when someone prophesies, he speaks to encourage people, to build them up, and to bring comfort. In the King James, it'll say, 
edification, exhortation, and comfort. The footnote here in the Passion Translation says, Paul does not describe prophecy here as predictive, but as influential to advance spiritual welfare of the body. How many of you have ever had someone walk up to you and say, I've got a word for you? Yeah. And did it meet this criteria? Did it encourage you? Did it build you up? Or did it comfort you? That's the purpose of prophecy in most instances. Now, yes, there are some times when there are prophetic that are predictive in nature, but by and large, it is right here to m help the, the body uh, encourage one another. It's, it's not like there's the fivefold ministry, which are apostles, prophets, uh, pastors, teachers, and evangelists. Those are offices that people are called to. We're not all called to be prophets, but we all can prophesy. And we all can prophesy to encourage, to build up, and to comfort. I can't tell you the number of times that people have, have brought comforting words to me or have built me up. I remember also one time walking off the platform at the church on the way, and there was a woman that had been on the platform with me, and she says, I have a word for Pastor Jack. This would have been 1999, I think. She says, I, I have a word for Pastor Jack Hayford. I said, really? What is it? She says, well, it's only three words. And I said, okay, what are the three words? And she says, let it rip. <laughs> and then she said, preach with gusto. And I thought, huh, okay. And then I got to thinking, you know, I actually had a three-word prophetic word for one guy. He was on the church basketball league. And he had the most beautiful shot. I mean, he would swish. There was a problem, though. He had a bunch of hot dogs on his team, and those hot dogs were always saying, throw me the ball, throw me the ball. And so he would take, pass up wide open shots. So finally one night I saw him on a Wednesday night out in the lobby, and I said, I have a word for you, and I think it applies to more than maybe just the obvious. But I said, you need to take the shot. He goes, you're right. Yeah, I need to do that in business. I need to do that in my family. And obviously, I'm passing up some open shots <laughs> on the basketball court. But we can encourage people when we are listening to the Holy Spirit. And sometimes it's as simple as three words, take the shot. Well, I went out after that woman said I had three words for Pastor Jack, let it rip and preach with gusto. I went out and I sat down and I wasn't really listening to the sermon all that much that morning. Instead, I started writing down three word phrases that would encourage people. Things like take the shot, go the distance, find your passion, follow your heart. All those different types of things. By the time church was over, I think I had 20 or 25. And they just kept coming. They just kept bubbling up in me. And by the end of the week, I had over 100 of these little pithy aphor aphorisms that people sometimes call them. <laughs> and I thought, okay, Lord, what am I supposed to do with this? And I saw that it was a way of prophesying to people. It was a way of encouraging. It was a way of building them up. And it was a way of comforting them. So... Here's a way that I, I did that. I started writing on people's Facebook pages on their birthdays. And I would, I would say something like, take the shot, something like that. One day, I hit upon one that really resonated with people. And it was, recognize your significance. And when I started writing that, people go, Whoa, you have no idea how much I needed to hear that. Because we get pushed down a lot in this world. People tear us down. And right now there's things that are so divisive in our country. I, I titled this an encouraging word in discouraging times. But I want this to be encouraging to us today. I want us to say, that, hey, we can prophesy to people. We can build them up. We can encourage them. We can comfort them. And sometimes as simple as three different words. I also, one of the things, the words that I wrote down was find your passion. And there's a way of doing that. I'm not going to go through it all. The, but basically, here's what it comes down to. You write down 10 things that you're passionate about. 
then start arranging them in order. And you're like, take the first one and say, am, am I more passionate about this or this? And then arrange it until you've got them in order of most passionate down to least passionate. Then take those top three or four, and those are the ones that are going to, to guide you. And the last time I took that test, I've taken it about three times now, and it changes. It changes over the course of your life. But the last time that I did that, I found out I wanted to enjoy the journey. So now, when I write on people's Facebook pages, I'll say, hey, congratulations on another trip around the sun. Enjoy the journey. Because sometimes we get so wrapped up with the goal that's way out there that we don't enjoy where we are right now. So I want to encourage you this morning that you can do the same thing. You can encourage people by giving them just a simple three-word phrase of encouragement. You know, prophecy, if we're going to say it, though, it has to actually be spoken out. You know, I, I might have a word for Dave, but if I don't come up and tell him what that word is, he doesn't know. <laughs> I mean, I can smile at him. <laughs> but if I don't say, hey, Dave, be encouraged, brother. Follow your passion. Find your, find, find your passion. Follow your passion. Then you're not going to, to know that encouraging word that I, that I had for you. The world knows that there is um, th that there's truth. You know, a friend of mine says sometimes uh, we need to eat the fish and spit out the bones. And what he means by that is there's truth in a lot of things, but there's also some untruths as well. And those untruths we have to spit out. And years ago, there was a book. This was in 2007, 2008. And at the time, one day a week, I was coaching other realtors from around the country. And the coaching organization that I worked for wanted us to do something called a 10-10. Now, at that time, the book The Secret was all the rage. And they were, everyone was talking about the law of attraction, you know, and what we can attract into our lives. Well, and, and they wanted us to do these two things. One, write down 10 things that we were grateful for to the universe. Now, I knew enough. I've been in, around, I've been a believer in Jesus Christ since I was eight years old. I knew that I was grateful to the creator of the universe. Nevertheless, when I sat down to do my first 1010, I heard so strong within me, I have a name and I want you to use it. And so I was thinking, okay, Lord God, what, what is your name? You have many names in the Bible. What name do you want me to use? And I went back to the very first one that was written down that Moses asked God, who do, you, who do I say sent me to, to Pharaoh? And he said, I am that I am. And that's the Hebrew word Yahweh, uh, yod heh vav -He. And so I wrote down, I am grateful to Yahweh for, and I would write down the 10 things that I was grateful for. There's something about the power of being grateful. There's something about the power of praise. There's something about the power of thanksgiving that even the world knows that, that something happens when we release that gratefulness, when we release that thanksgiving. Well, then they wanted us to write down 10 things that we wanted to attract into our lives. But I also remembered in Mark 11, 23, 24, the Lord said, I mean, yes, yeah, Jesus actually said, yes, Jesus was the one that said that. They said, uh, have the God kind of faith. I tell you the truth, if you say to this mountain, be removed, be cast in the sea, and don't doubt in your heart, you will have what you say. Therefore, when you pray, believe that you receive it, and you will have it. So I wrote down, instead of 10 things I wanted to track, I said, I believe I receive. And, and so my 10 tens, a lot of times, Valerie, my wife, would be up there at the number one, and then my kids, and then uh, work-related things, uh, church-related things, all those different types of things. And it changed from day to day. And the things that I wanted to attract into my life, well, well actually, I already believed that I received when I wrote them down. I'd been doing this for a month or two, 
when all of a sudden, one day, I wrote down for my real estate business, I believe I receive a two and a half million dollar buyer. Okay. So I got up and I was about ready to open my computer. And when I did that, I heard an internal voice say, call people whose last names begin with the letter L. That had never happened before. So I opened up my contact management system to the letter L, called the first one. I don't think he was there. The second one, I almost didn't call him because I had never met him. He and his wife had divorced. She bought a condo, and then they got back together, and she called me to sell her condo for her. And I uh, never met the guy, talked to him several times on the phone. I'd put him on my mailing list and hadn't talked to him in probably two or three years. Nevertheless, I called. And so I'm going to call him David. Um, so I, I call and I said, Hey, David, I don't know if you'll remember me or not. This is Rodney Johnson. Hey, Rodney, hey, we were just talking last night. Hey, we want to buy a house in Malibu. We'll spend up to two and a half million dollars. <laughs> two weeks later, we're in escrow. We ended up doing between the sale of his house and the purchase about 2.7, close to 2.7 million. So needless to say, that... That actually became a prophetic word to me, <laughs> talk about building up. But it came about because I started from a place of thankfulness and gratefulness. And then believing that I received. And we can do the same thing with prophetic words. We can believe that we receive. Now, I want to tell you about one prophetic word that was given to me 35 years ago. And it's just now starting to be worked out. But I need to back up to 2018, one week before my dad died. My father uh, lived in Missouri, and Valerie and I were scheduled to go to Nashville a week before he died for a wedding. And I knew there was a divine appointment there. I wasn't sure what it was going to be. Uh, you know, I'm a writer. I thought, well, maybe I'll meet a publisher for a, a book that I've got going, or a, maybe, I don't know. I didn't know what it was going to be, but I knew there was a divine appointment. And we went to this church, and the guy was preaching about the fruit of the Spirit, not the, the gifts of the Spirit. I mentioned uh, that there's offices of the Spirit, there's uh, gifts of the Spirit, and then there's fruit of the Spirit. That particular day, he was teaching on faithfulness or steadfastness. I can't tell you the number of people who have come up to me and said, Rodney, God sees you as faithful. Rodney, God sees you as steadfast. And quite frankly, after hearing that over and over and over again, it wasn't comforting to me. Here's why. I interpret that as being like, yeah, you know the, those prophetic words you got 35 years ago? Mm, yeah, it's still not here. And, and it wasn't encouraging to me. But the pastor told a story about how a caterpillar will spin a cocoon. And then while it's inside that cocoon, it goes through a metamorphosis process. And when it comes out of that, it doesn't just boom, fly out and off it goes, a beautiful butterfly. Instead, it's a painstaking process of picking through and, and getting through that. And then he finally gets like one little leg out and then he picks more and gets another little leg out and then has to get the, all the, 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 the wings and stuff and until finally it can get out. And he said, faithfulness is like that caterpillar turned into a butterfly. We take it in incremental steps. All of a sudden, something clicked for me. It's like, okay. Those people that were saying, hey, Rodney, God sees you as faithful, or God sees you as steadfast, they were saying, hey, it's incremental steps. Incremental steps. So let's go back to 35 years ago. I had been working at ABC Entertainment, and I got laid off. I got the old left foot of fellowship. <laughs> when I started there, I think we had about 23, 24, 25 people in our current programming department. That was 
shows that were currently on the air. And my job was reading scripts. And so I did that, read hundreds every season um, because we, were, we had a lot of shows on the air. But I got laid off. And I, five months passed. And I said, finally, after counseling with some people, I said, you know, if nothing opens up in entertainment, I'm going to have to uh, op op open my uh, real estate license, uh, operate my real estate license. So uh, that was happening. And I was praying with a gentleman that a lot of you know. He was here a couple of weeks ago when, uh, when we sent off PJ and Robert. Uh, Michael Harrington, flute player. You guys remember him? He and I were praying 35 years ago. And he says, Rodney, I see you as carrying two bags of money, one in your left hand and one in your right hand. And he said, when you come back into entertainment, you won't be able, you won't be dependent upon other people for your livelihood. He said, the one bag represents what real estate will do for you and the other bag will represents what you'll do on your own in, um, in the entertainment. And that word has stayed with me. I've believed it. You know, we can cast words aside, but now things are beginning to happen. Um, I reconnected with a friend of mine from Oral Roberts University. We've written a script. It's with um, agents right now. It's with uh, people that can be decision makers. And... Um, and it's also a Hallmark Christmas movie. <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm believing that things like that are going to start to happen. And again, we won't be dependent upon some other outside source for our, for our money and, uh, and our income. And so I wanted to encourage you today that if you've had a word like that that's been a long time in coming, it's incremental steps. Just take one step. Do what you need to do before, <laughs> what's set before you each day. And then ask the Lord along the way, Lord, I want to enjoy the journey. Who can I encourage today? Who can I build up today? Who can I comfort today? You know, my wife lost her daddy on Thursday, but we were so happy that he's now in heaven but, you know, there are so many people right now reaching out to her and giving her comforting words. And she's saving those. She's treasuring those. So I want to end by just saying, praying, and let's ask the Lord how we can either build up, encourage, or comfort someone today. Father, we thank you that you are Yahweh. <laughs> you are Yahweh. I am that I am. And, Lord, we want to be cognizant of what we put behind those words when we say, I am. Lord, we want to say, I am healed, I am whole, I am righteous in Jesus. Those are the things that we want to say. And, Lord, today we ask that you would give us words that would encourage, that would build up and comfort those around us. And we thank you for that. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Thank you, Rodney. Thank you so much for that encouraging word. It is now time for our, our tithes and offering, if they would bring the basket to the center. We have an opportunity to give online, or you could have given on your phone while you were here today, and if you brought it, we have the opportunity here. So, Heavenly Father, we ask right now that you would bless the offering that comes. You are the giver, the provider. Lord Jesus, you will carry us through every aspect of our journey in this church. And I pray that you would continue to rain down the blessing and the provision from this church family. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for giving back to us for what you've given. Thank you, in Jesus' name, amen. So our announcements at this point are, we are still in the year of kindness, 2022. We've got about, what, five months left because we've turned the corner into July. So keep being out there and being an encourager, but uh, do something extra for others, and let's see how that returns back to us. Well, the food basket is out in the foyer today. Please fill up a grocery bag, 
uh, with the food that is there and take it and bless someone else or bless yourself because that's what it's there for is to take care of you. The baby bottle drive is still going on. If you haven't filled up your bottle for Open Arms Ministry, um, if fill that up and bring that back to Bonnie, and she would gladly give you another one, okay? And you fill it up with change, by the way. I don't know if we've been real clear about that. Um, I'm filling mine up with change. Um, <laughs> Wednesday night, the Al-Anon meeting is still meeting here, and that's a growing entity, but it is open to all of you for health and wholeness and and recovery, so uh, join them and be a part of. And then also we have a bookstore that is growing out in the foyer. Uh, it isn't fully open yet. We're using it this summer as our coffee cart. Jesus and Joe is beginning, and that's to welcome you as you come in, be a little bit more relaxed here this summer, and uh, let's come together in small groups. Prayer and worship, not this Wednesday, but the following on July 13th, and we will be blessed and gifted with um, Rodney will be leading in worship. He is very gifted musically as well, and uh, we had a conversation the other day in regards to the type of worship that he does, and you would be very blessed to come along and, and hear what that has. Uh, that's it. So in order to honor and encourage all of you, it's the 4th of July, uh, we have the ice cream truck outside for all of you to celebrate. So fellowship, Stay a little bit after, visit with one another. I love you. Please, please, please have a very safe and blessed 4th of July. Bring your fireworks on, okay? Bless you. Let's all stand for this last song. It's a prayer. July 3rd and happy July 4th. <laughs>